So up until now, we have looked at how thermodynamics affects our everyday lives, uh, how it is important in engineering, and how we can solve problems using thermodynamics and where all it plays a role, right? And then uh, we looked at forms of energy, manifestations of energy, and how energy is stored in a system, how it moves from one system to the other, uh, how a system has energy interactions with the surroundings, and uh, how energy flows when matter flows into a system or out of system, right? And then we looked at some important substances and how they behave. And uh, in other words, we looked at properties of pure substances, right? And uh, hopefully this has given, set the background for us now to look at some very specific applications of whatever we have done so far, right? And uh, in this chapter, in this uh, module, we'll be looking at energy analysis of closed systems as a special case, right? And uh, at the very first, we will look at uh, the energy interaction by work, that is a work interaction uh, that involves a moving boundary, right? So we're going to look at moving boundary work. So we all know that uh, when we have, let's say a balloon and uh, when we try to inflate this balloon and uh, assuming that I take this as my system, um, the air, uh, when I try to put more air into the balloon, uh, the air pushes the balloon out and uh, after some time, my system will start looking like this. Right? So that means that the system has pushed the atmosphere out, right? And so therefore, it must have done some work on the atmosphere. In other words, the system has done some work on the surroundings, right? And uh, so, but this is an example of an open system because air is entering the system when I am trying to uh, blow a balloon, right? So, but in this uh, module, we are going to look at closed systems. A very good example of a closed system that does work on the surroundings is a piston cylinder arrangement, right? So, why, where is this uh, found? We can find this in practically every automobile, every truck, right? Every car, every motorbike has an engine and this engine is nothing but uh, at the basic level, it's a piston cylinder arrangement where there's a gas that is filled when the piston compresses. Uh, there's heat added to the system, usually in the form of fuel being burnt inside uh, the compressed air and then the hot gases expand and they push the piston out, right? Thereby doing work on the piston. And so therefore, a piston cylinder arrangement is a very common everyday example of a moving boundary work being done, right? So uh, if we consider this as our system, then this system obviously does work on the surroundings. What is, what is it doing work on, right? So usually this is connected to a crankshaft that's then connected to a wheel right and there it rotates a wheel and that's how motorcycles move that's how cars move trucks move and so on right so basically what is it doing work on it's clear that this system is doing work but what is it doing work on right? It is doing work on the surroundings in general, yes, uh, but basically it is doing work against broadly three things. It is doing work against friction. Where is the friction? The friction is between the piston and the cylinder because there is a normal reaction between the piston and the cylinder. There is friction when you try to move the piston and so therefore the system is doing work against friction. And outside the pressure is atmospheric pressure. So 
that means it is also doing work against the atmosphere right and of course it is pushing the crank and it is rotating the wheel and so therefore it is doing mechanical work so that the vehicle can move and overcome the resistance like for example the resistance associated with the rolling of the wheels or the resistance associated with the wind resistance that a vehicle faces. So that is what it is overcoming eventually right. So uh, we can say it is doing work against three forces broadly. and uh, one is friction right and the second is uh, atmosphere and the third is others right so that is what it is doing work against and uh, if I assume that this process is quasi static right In real engines, in motorbike engines and car engines, the engine rotates at a typical speed of about 3000 rpm, that is 3000 revolutions per minute, right. And so uh, the piston moves so fast that the system cannot be in equilibrium when it is moving, right. And so the approximation of a quasi static or a quasi equilibrium process is not strictly valid for everyday devices such as automobiles, but then. Um, if suppose I can approximate it as a quasi equilibrium process then it will look something like this. So let us say this is the pressure and this is specific volume. So I go from a high pressure and low specific volume I go to a relatively lower pressure and a higher specific volume right because it is expanding and it is a closed system. So the mass is fixed whereas the volume is increasing and so the specific volume increases and uh, similarly because it is expanding its pressure is likely to drop and therefore the pressure drops so right. So the pressure decreases and the volume increases right and uh, I might go somewhat like this right. Now let us imagine that this uh, piston is at a distance x and it moves by a distance dx. right it moves by a distance dx what is the pressure inside let us call that p and let us assume that during the small movement dx the pressure does not change by much right. So then I can uh, talk about the small work done the moving boundary work as equal to the, the force times the distance right is a force the distance and I know that if the pressure is P then the force must be P times area right right so this is the area area of cross section right so this is the area right and if I multiply area with dx I also have I can write this as P times dv where uh, this v is a volume and that is why this external boundary work is also sometimes called pdv work right because this delta wb is equal to pdv right. But remember that I can only talk about pdv work only if the process is quasi equilibrium process right or a quasi equilibrium process 
So I will not call it quasi-static. I will just call it quasi-equilibrium process. If my process is not quasi-equilibrium, then I cannot, of course I know state 1 and 2, but I cannot draw this line or curve between 1 and 2. Why? Because the state when I when a process is non quasi equilibrium the state during the process is not defined which means I cannot draw any of these points that are along the way from 1 to 2 right. So which means I cannot draw this graph and I cannot also claim that the pressure inside is P because the pressure if it is a non quasi equilibrium process the pressure is different at different points inside the system and so therefore I cannot really claim that the work done is p times a times dx right. So, this analysis is only valid for quasi equilibrium processes right and so w b then is equal to integral p dv from 1 to 2 <coughs> right and uh, if you look at this uh, let us call this uh, capital V instead of small v right um, then if you look at it integral p dv is also happens to be the area under this curve right. So, if I can represent the process on a p v diagram right then I can write the work done as the area under the curve right. But again uh, this is only if the process is a quasi equilibrium process 